Today, you will learn how to recycle 3D printing plastic. We've been doing endless 3D printing here at Manuel do Mundo, from the gears of Octobot and the instant camera to our beloved bone Ososvaldo, an anatomically correct skeleton made 100% with 3D printing. The problem is that with practically every print we make, a bit of plastic is left over and we just don't have the heart to throw it away. So that's enough. We did a lot of research and found an extremely simple way to recycle 3D printer plastic, which you can also do at home. Before we begin, remember this is one of eight special projects launching the Manual Maker website. There you'll find Manual Do Mundo projects to download, check measurements and view details that are often hard to show in videos. But it's also a place where you can publish your own projects. You can share the cool things you've invented that ended up sitting in a drawer where no one could access them. And you could make the world better by letting other people learn from what you've created. So it's a place not only to get inspired and see other projects, but also to help other people. The address is manualmaker.com and it's completely free to browse or upload your project. So to start, why is there leftover plastic from 3D printing? Here at Manual do Mundo, four things happen. The first is that sometimes we print things wrong, designs that weren't done very well, or sometimes we simply get confused. Like this rib from Ososvaldo, which I accidentally printed twice. With almost 200 bones, I mix some of them up while selecting the parts. So now I've got extras, and I'm not even sure what to do with this one. The second reason is when a print fails, a part pops off the bed or breaks halfway through and the printer keeps going. In the end, you get things like this cat missing part of its head or this alligator that printed squished. And this here, what people call a bird's nest, is when the printer keeps printing into thin air with no base under it. The third reason is the supports. Supports are like scaffolding that the 3D printer builds under pieces it needs to print. Let me get an example. Suppose I want to print this screwdriver. When you load it into the computer and decide how to print it, you can choose several different orientations. Usually we pick one with the smallest possible gap underneath. Here it's bad because there is a big void under the part. This looks like one of the better orientations, but still, you can see there's a hollow space here. I can even slide my finger through it. When the printer tries to deposit melted plastic there, what happens? It just falls. It drops straight down. So before printing that part, the printer builds a kind of base, which we call support, that lets it deposit plastic onto the base so the piece stays in place and doesn't collapse. And of course, after the print is done, you have to remove that base. You have to take the support off. This alligator, for example, has support under its mouth. I usually remove it with a screwdriver and cutting pliers. The plastic clings there, so let's take this support off the alligator. And the fourth reason is when you print something colorful, like this little cat we printed once. The printer itself changes color mid-print. And while switching filament colors, it has to purge the old plastic. It discards a bit of the filament that was already inside to clean the print nozzle, basically doing an internal flush. During this change, it creates blobs, little strings of plastic, and leftover bits that get thrown away. And plenty more. We'll soon release a video explaining how this printer works it's really cool. All the plastics you see here are PLA, the most common material used in 3D printers, okay? Everybody uses it. It doesn't smell. It's easy to work with. PLA stands for polylactic acid, a polymer made from lactic acid. In simple terms, a polymer is plastic. And the lactic acid used to make PLA comes from plants like corn, beets, sugarcane, and cassava. Yes, it's a plant-based biodegradable plastic that decomposes in a few months under the right conditions. From what we've researched, simply throwing PLA in the trash so it ends up in a landfill is pointless. It will take a very long time to degrade. The ideal conditions for PLA degradation was heat, humidity, are industrial and very controlled. So in the end, the simplest solution for us is to recycle it. Ideally, we'd have a machine that turns plastic back into filament so we could reuse it. Some people have made similar projects and we still want to, but we realize it's not easy to do at home. And that's when we recorded this video where we made a sugar bottle using a silicone mold. 
It was a cool video showing how easy it is to make a silicone mold and melt things inside it. And suddenly you end up with a new object. But the big question was, what object is that? And now I'm going to say something controversial. A lot of people recycle things only to make coasters, paperweights, or somewhat questionable keychains. And in the end, you're left with a pile of paperweights that are basically useless. We wanted a useful object, something that 100% of people use and use a lot. So after a lot of research and a bunch of surveys, we arrived at this, the hanger. I know, no one dreams of getting a hanger as a birthday gift. But it's an item you definitely use. Probably dozens of them, to be honest. And then there's this. What goes through someone's mind while designing this, while modeling it in 3D? Everything needs to be sturdy if you're making it from plastic. You can't have a hook that thin. I'll make a thin hook? Well, no, because the plastic won't hold. Second, a hanger has important parts, like this little hook for shirts and similar pieces, and the bottom bar, which is made for hanging pants. And Danny added this slightly larger section here, a sort of base for the hanger, which is extremely useful for us when turning this into a silicone mold. And most importantly, the stereolithography file is available on the Manual Maker website. If you want to download and print it, it's there. So what did we do next? First, we made a cardboard container shaped like the hanger. That's where we'll pour the silicone to create the mold. So the hanger is fixed to the bottom with double-sided tape. We prepare the silicone with the catalyst. You can easily buy this silicone online. This other liquid is what makes the silicone want to harden. Then remember to coat the hanger with something that helps it come loose from the silicone. We're using petroleum jelly. After that, pour the liquid over everything. The silicone takes about 24 hours to cure, depending on the type you're using. For us, that's how long it took. And the result is really cool. You pull the hanger out of the silicone block, and now you have a mold with the exact shape of the hanger, a cavity ready to fill. Look how nice it turned out, even though it's a little messy. Of course it is. We already tested it before recording this video for you, but yes, it worked really well. But Ibere, I'm not loving this hanger idea. It's kind of a boring object. You used a lot of silicone to make that, and silicone is expensive. Why teach this? Exactly so that you can choose whatever object you want. It doesn't have to be a hanger. If you want to make a coaster, make a coaster. A keychain, go for it. The key is understanding the process and how everything works, and then you can make whatever you want. Honestly, I prefer the paperweight, but that's fine. Let's start making this thing. One important detail, any fully printed 3D pieces will need to be broken apart. You can't just toss them in and melt everything as is because PLA doesn't melt easily. In 3D printing, it's essential that the plastic doesn't become completely liquid or it would drip and fail to hold its shape. With bigger pieces, there's no way around it. You'll have to break them, smash them with a hammer, things like that. Supports and blobs from the printer melt very easily. No mystery there. We're not using an oven. A heat gun is way more practical. Let's begin. You'll need a mask, goggles and gloves since there will be fumes and you could burn your hand. I'm going to switch on the heat gun and gradually add the leftover pieces from the 3D printer. I'm only using this material for now, okay? It's just for the first test and the first hanger I'll make here. The heat gun starts to soften the material quite a lot. I'm pressing it with the handle of a spoon which creates a problem. The plastic sticks to the spoon. PLA, after all, adheres extremely well. That's great for 3D printing because the layers stay firmly attached, right? But here it's also sticking firmly to my spoon. We eventually figured out that silicone itself is a great material to use for pressing. I'll try cutting a piece of silicone and pressing the melted material with it. It sticks much less. Another improvement we realized is fixing the heat gun onto something. That way, I have an extra free hand to work with. And I don't get arm pain from holding the heat gun up. It's also safer. Your support needs to be sturdy. We made a makeshift one here, but it works fine and won't fall over. It needs about 15 minutes to cool before you can remove it from the mold. And... I think it came out kind of holy. Take a look up close. Where I melted the polylactic acid thoroughly, it turned out great. In the spots I didn't, it didn't. The first layer ended up full of holes. 
It still needs some finishing, like removing these burrs, but let's try filling it in with polylactic acid. I'm going to make these fixes directly in the mold, but upside down, because silicone handles heat better than my table. Danny told me the trick after testing it first. If it's your first time, heat the hanger, place the plastic pieces on top, and they'll stick right away. To smooth it out, I'm going to try Fernando's idea, using a silicone spoon, the flexible kind we use to stir rice. So far, it's working well. Now let's try the next hanger, which should turn out better. The hanger looks better, but it still has a lot of burrs. These could snag and ruin clothes. Let's remove them with a utility knife. Anything you take off can be melted and reused. I think this looks a bit crude. Finishing with a utility knife is not very precise. I'm going to try something more obvious, a soldering iron. This is one we set aside specifically for these kinds of jobs. We use it to drill plastic lids and finish 3D prints. Never use a soldering iron you actually solder with. This completely ruins it, okay? If you don't have a soldering iron, you can heat the tip of locking pliers or something similar. But I noticed this gives a much more controlled result. I can remove the burrs, melt the plastic, and it smooths itself out without losing material. This is my first finished version. It kind of looks like a hippie hanger, very artsy. When you hold it, you can feel it's sturdy. It's made of a lot of plastic, so it's strong. It's smooth enough, not sharp or anything. You can feel a few bumps when you run your hand over it, but nothing that would damage clothing. But now I want to make another one with more technique. Using what I learned here, I want the next one to come out cleaner. I used the silicone spoon, but it couldn't handle the heat. The handle cracked. So I handed it to Danny, who prefers using the metal spoon. After two tests, he figured out the best technique is to gradually press the polylactic acid as much as possible, instead of piling a bunch of plastic and trying to melt everything at once. This time we're using a lot more support pieces, not just tiny blobs. In the end, we realized it might be cool to decorate it, using a filament as if it were a kind of doodle on top of the hanger. This one is going to look way cooler than the first. We used orange on one side and lime green on the other, with the hanger already removed from the silicone mold. Now yes, it looks really awesome. The finish is much better than the first hanger. I think this little experiment with the filament really worked. It turned out great, and the plastic fill here is much better than the first attempt. There are no more weird big gaps and you can barely tell this was made with filaments at all, right? It just looks like melted plastic, but the most important part is that the hanger is functional. It's a hanger you can actually use to hang clothes without any issues, and it works. Here it is. We placed here the other hangers that were made in this series of recycled hangers. I'm curious to know how much plastic we actually recycled in the end. In the end, the last hanger ended up being the heaviest one, the one that used the most plastic. Look at that, 360 grams of polylactic acid. Let's get the thinnest one now. From 360, it needs to focus, but hey, I break. 360 grams of polylactic acid is like 36 reefs per hanger just in plastic. But you didn't actually spend that money, right? It was plastic that would have been thrown away and we managed to reuse it. But the most important part of all this, okay? It's not about making a hanger. What we're trying to develop here is a way to recycle PLA. So if you have any cool ideas for another object that you think would be made with this kind of recycling, right? Something without too many details, nothing super fancy? Make your own version, upload it to the Manual Maker website and share it with everyone. It's going to be really cool. In our last video to launch the Manual Maker website, we built a folding table that you can assemble using just a screwdriver. It's one of the most useful projects I've ever made. I'm sure that if you live in a small place, you'll be dying to make a table like this. 